Yeah, so. So today we are joined by Corey Trico from Duke and Shania Twain, Kelly Clarkson, and more. Well, yes. Coming. Hey, how's it going? That was my cue to say hey. <laughs> <laughs> First, we have to start by apologizing for trying to book this originally on your wife's Jody's birthday. Oh, that's okay. We had we had a good time. Would have been fun if you guys could have joined us for her birthday, but unfortunately, the state of the world, we all have to be separated. <laughs> Not to mention you're 2,600 miles away from me. <laughs> If we were not all in social isolation or physical distancing from COVID-19, where would you be right now and what would you be doing? Uh, what, what's the, it's April. So I would have just finished up in, in Vegas with Shania for uh, the March leg. Um, I would be at home. I would still be at home, actually. This was the month I was setting aside to do some writing with Tuke. And it's worked out actually perfectly because that's what we've been doing the last few weeks. How are Yoda and Maz? Well, there's Maz. There's Maz. And hey, there's Yoda. <laughs> They're cute, right? What was your first instrument you learned? Uh, the first instrument I learned was piano, actually. I was five years old and my dad uh, started teaching me to play piano and then I went to a different teacher in Moose Jaw. And then, um, and then my dad started teaching me again and I started playing guitar when I was nine. Yeah, so, so my dad taught me partially and then when they realized that, when my dad told me, or when it was time to, for, for lesson time, it was too easy for me to say, nah, I wanna go out and play with my friends. So then they got an external teacher um, that I couldn't use that excuse on. <laughs> what instrument do you wish you could learn? Oh, well, I have a sitar that I wish I could learn. And I started playing a little bit, but I realized it's pretty complicated. And, uh, I mean, I, make, I can make a few sounds to make it sound like something, but I, I really don't know what I'm doing. And it's got so many strings on it. Yep, all along the neck there's tuning pegs, so you got to know how to tune them properly. It's pretty, pretty insane. What is a sitar? I have no idea what that is. I wish I had it in my studio right now, but it's actually in the house. Um, it's an Indian instrument. It's, it's the thing that goes. It's got that kind of, kind of vibrating, rizzy. That's cool. Yeah. If you've ever watched an Indian Indian documentary or anything, they, they always have sitar. <laughs> uh, is it because it has different note scale? Yeah, so Indian music, you know, like I don't really know how it all works, but there's like in, in music that you and I know, there's half tones and whole tones. Yeah. But in Indian music, they have quarter tones. So it's, there's a lot of really small, minute frequencies in their scales. Um, so you really have to have an ear that's adjusted to that. Um, but yeah, the, the sitar is, is probably the main um, in Indian instrument. And then the tablas, you've heard tablas. They're kind of like bongo drums, Indian style. And they, sit, they, they sit on the ground when they play all the instruments. There's also like, I forget what it's called, but it looks like a, a, an accordion that you sit on the ground and you you pump it with full of air and then you play it like a piano. So it's all pretty in interesting uh, music, um, but I don't understand it. So I'm not, I don't play it. And it's nice for me not, it's nice for me not to play it because whenever I hear music now, I analyze it and I don't, it it's, keeps me from enjoying it a little bit because even when I'm in a movie theater, I'm like, oh, why did they use that piece of music there? You know, keeps me from just enjoying the, the music. But with Indian music, because I don't understand it, I can just sit there and enjoy it and I don't have to criticize it or critique it in any way or pick it apart. What got you interested in Indian music? Um, you know, I went to, my wife went to, Jody, she went to India back in 90, 95, I think it was. 
And when she came back, she she wanted to go back again. And so this time I went with her. And we've been back about five times since. So we, we got to learn a lot about the country and uh, the appreciation for the music and the culture and, of course, the food. Most of the food there is, um, is, is vegetarian. In fact, if you fly in an airplane there, you, you automatically get a vegetarian meal unless you order a special meal with meat. <laughs> so it's the exact opposite of here. But, of course, we don't get many uh, meals here anymore on flights. But they still do it in India. What was the most interesting thing you learned in India? Um, hmm, let's see. That you can experience the most beautiful things in the world and the most terrible things. Because the, as you know, the Himalayas mountains are in India and they are so gorgeous. The nature there is beautiful. The temples there are beautiful, but there's unimaginable poverty there. And uh, so there's, it's a land of contrast. And you also learn about yourself because when I was there, I was riding a, a train and they tend to overbook their trains and people just jump on without tickets and they don't have a seat. So if you have a, a, a bed in your train, because some of the, the trains are overnight trains, if you're not taking up like spread eagle on your bed, someone's going to end up on your bed with you when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> and so you start to, you start to learn about being assertive. Like if you're most Canadians are very passive and polite, <laughs> you got to throw all that away when you go to India and just kind of, you got to be assertive and uh, stand your ground. And when you stand in line for tickets, you got to make sure no one gets in front of you. And uh, it's survival of the fittest there. <laughs> If people have questions, please put them in put them in the comments, and we will ask them. And yes, by, please. And by the way, actually, Shane from Duke joined. All Shane. right. Hey, Shane. Oh, Devin Steen too. I know him. Uh, you have you have a ton of jobs in the music industry. What's your favorite one? Ton of jobs in the music industry. What's my favorite one? You know what? I think if I had to pick one, it would be to play guitar. However, the the good thing about what I do is that I get to do so many different things. So when I'm on the road and I'm enjoying that, but it gets to become a little monotonous, you know, day after day living out of a suitcase, then I can be like, oh, I can't wait to get home and just be in the studio for a while. And then when I get home in the studio, it's like, oh, I can't wait to get out on the road again. And then I go on the road. So I get to change it up a lot. I get to play a lot of different instruments. And it keeps it all fresh for me and exciting. And then also I get to mix and produce. And there's just so many, so many facets of the music industry. And I like to get my little fingers into all of them. Uh, any exciting pro projects you're working on? Uh, yes. Of course, you know about Took. So yeah. Took is is my main focus right now during quarantine. It's enabled us to all get together virtually on Skype, or actually we use WhatsApp, and uh, we write songs together. And it's turning out really well. We, we have a few uh, on the go, and I think Shane's in the studio today recording some drums for them. So uh, it's really exciting. They're, 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 they're kick-ass songs. Because we only write hits. We don't waste yeah. our time with other songs. We just write hits. <laughs> just ask us. <laughs> uh, can you talk about any exciting projects? Um, well, you know, besides two? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have any secret projects going on. Um, just, just the Shania show in Vegas, which I hope everybody comes to see after all everything gets back to normal. And um, that's kind of what's going on right now is Tuke and Shania for me. Uh, so what, someone asked this, when will Tuke's new album be out? When will Tuke's album be what? The new out. Album. Out, the new okay. Album. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we have to decide if we're going to release, release it as a full album or we might just release one song at a time. If we do one song at a time, we can have songs out quicker, which most people probably would like. Yeah. So 
I think we'll probably use that as a model because, you know, in this day and age, people aren't really buying CDs so much. Um, and they get all their music online anyway. So if we can keep churning out new stuff, you know, every other month or whatever, then um, it stays a little bit fresher in everyone's mind. And, and it's a, it easier. It, people don't have to wait as long. So that, that appeals to us as well. Uh, Tina Marshall asks, are you writing original songs for the album? Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. Jody asks, are there any covers Tooks really want, Took really wants to do? Any covers that Took really wants to do? Well, I can only speak for myself at this point. Uh, I, I would love to do Wind Em Up by Saga. We already did one Saga tune on our first album called uh, On The Loose. But I really like, um, I really like Wind Em Up. I really like uh, Arias and Symphonies by The Spoons. Or I think they just go by Spoons. No, the. Um, that was back from the 80s as well. Uh, I would love to do All We Are by Kim Mitchell. You guys know that one? No. Oh, yeah, check it out. I do. I yeah, do. it's great, right? Oh, yep. Oh, so Black, uh, so Black Room Media asks, what's the Frog. whole? Oh, Black Frog, sorry. Black Frog Media asks, what's the holdup with a Killer Dwarves song? <laughs> Black Frog Media is, uh, he's the guy that does all all the two um, artwork and video stuff and He's, he's the uh, magician behind everything that, all the Took logos and Took merchandise. His name is Darren. And he always wants us to do the, the killer dwarves. <laughs> tell him just to, to put a sock in it. You can tell him that for me. <laughs> so, Callan, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but Callan Provo wants a wild party by I am Kim. a wild party. I am a wild party by Kim Mitchell. Yeah, that's a good song. I am a wild party. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs> I mean, there's so many. We could do a full Kim Mitchell tribute record as well because he's just got so many. Another band that I would love to do is is Sheriff. Sheriff was a band from the 80s. They did one album together. Then they broke up and, and two of the members went to a band called Frozen Ghost. And the other guys went to a band called Alias, which was an American band with uh, two guys from Heart, the band Heart. So, and they all, the, when the band, when Sheriff broke up, they all went their separate ways. And right when they did that, one of their singles, which had been out for a while in Canada already, suddenly went viral in the U.S. And, and but the band was already broken up. So it was a very unique, uh, the, the, a very unique situation. The song was called When I'm With You. Baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I get chills when I'm with you. You guys remember that one? Anybody remember that one? My dad does. Huh? So, yeah. I'd love I, to do it. Do the sheriff's song. Despise. <laughs> He's telling me not to say this. He does not like rock and He despises rock and roll. He does not like it at all. Wait, who? Bob. He does not like rock and roll at all. I love Whoa. Him. What does he like? Country music? He likes... No, I don't. I don't really like anything. I mean, he, I'll listen. he likes, like, alternative and rap. <laughs> alternative. Alternative. Just alternative. Alternative. <laughs> yeah, he says uh, it's rock. Okay, well, he's, he's entitled to that. But alternative is kind of under the umbrella of rock and roll, isn't it? Who's the one person you've met through your work that you are, you've been in awe of? I don't know how to say that. In awe? Oh. Like, in awe? In awe of. Yep. In awe of. Well, I mean, I'm in awe of uh, Shania. I think she's very brilliant. Um, she, she writes songs amazingly. She, she directs the shows. Uh, she's a very creative person. Um, and her ex-husband, I, I really in awe of, Mutt Lang. Of course, Mutt Lang has produced Def Leppard and ACDC and um, Brian Adams and The Cars and Foreigner. 
So, you know, I got to work side by side with him as well. And I learned a lot of my production and, and mixing chops working with him. Um, I am totally in awe of the guys in Took, to be honest. I think Todd Kearns is such a great singer. Brent, man, it's just a privilege every time we get on stage together. Shane Gallus is, is an amazing drummer. And, of course, if you follow him on Instagram, uh, you see him, all his chops and whatnot. Uh, Brent Fitz has perfect pitch. Uh, he knows exactly the note you're playing wrong, <laughs> and we'll point it out. And that's a good that's a good thing. <laughs> Makes everybody better. And he's he's a multi instrumentalist. People think he's just a a drummer in Slash's band, but of course he plays bass with us in Took. And he's a great keyboard player as well. So uh, I I you know the Took band is just something that I'm so honored and and privileged to be a part of. Totally in all of those guys. Uh, the reason actually why we're doing this is actually Brent's fault. Oh, really? Why yeah. is that? Because he, because we saw my dad saw him doing it. Then we saw he was like, "Hey, maybe we can do this." And then, oh, and then it's I a good started, idea. And then I started. I did a solo interview, and Tom was like, "Hey, can I do it?" In? I started popping in and out. What? 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 And now he's doing this. <laughs> Solo, where I'm directing. Uh, so, here's the question. What can't Brent do? Brent. Brent, Brent. What can't, what can't Brent do? Brent. Um, let's see. What can't he do? You know, that's a good question. I don't even know. I'm sure he can't, uh, he can't, he can't sign his name like I do. <laughs> that's, that's good. Good at. Yeah, but he, he's an amazingly talented guy. Absolutely. Do you still talk to Mutt? Do I still talk to Mutt? Uh, I don't talk to him so much, but we email quite a bit. Huh. He, he likes to send jokes. I get a lot of jokes from Mutt. <laughs> is the fiddle hard to learn? The fiddle is so hard to learn. I'm still learning. <laughs> oh. You know why it's so hard? You know how on guitar you have frets? You know what frets are? No. Frets are the, they're the silver <laughs> lines on the neck of the guitar. Those oh, are frets, yeah. right? So every everywhere you put your finger, let me let me show you. Hang on a sec. Oh, he's got a guitar here. I'll get a guitar. All right. So these are frets, all those silver lines, right? Yeah. And so everywhere you put your finger is exactly a note right and no matter where i put it in this spot it's still within the space between these frets it's still the same note right yeah. now if you get a, if you get a fiddle you there's no lines right so everywhere you play a note slightly sharper right so you're you're in between notes. So remember when I was talking about Indian music having quarter tones and that sort of thing? That would be a quarter tone going up in between, right? So that makes it really difficult to stay in pitch, right? Because there's no frets to, to keep you on right on each note. So that's what makes it hard because when you're, when you're playing in, a, um, in different environments and you slide up to a note, there might be more humidity in the air in that particular day and so your finger might stick a little bit so the amount of pressure usually used to slide up to a note is now different so every day it's a it's a brand new instrument depending on climate humidity and um and even and if you're a little bit nervous it's going to uh, show <laughs> definitely in your playing and it's all about pitch with the fiddle pitch is very hard on fiddles and that's why when you see <laughs> when you see fiddle players on tv uh, in bands, you usually can't hear them because the sound man is, has dropped the fader on it because you're because he's playing so out of tune. <laughs> That's kind of like me because I I played saxophone in full band, but school's canceled. It's like the opposite because yeah. you can't hear the trumpets. We are so loud. We're in the back row. The tenor. We play with the tenor, and he is so. Yeah. He's he's an annoying person and he is so loud. <laughs> it's 
really hard. Wait, he's loud as with his voice or his instrument? Both. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, if you play trumpet, trumpet is very hard to stay in pitch, isn't it? Because there's only like three valves. I actually lost it. Trumpet. I actually used to play trumpet. Uh, now I play euphonium because I was too Okay. Low. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, is there anything special you do for your fingers to fiddle? For fiddling? Uh, just play. You know, when you're, when you're trying to get your fingers in, in shape, you just got to play. Whether it's guitar, piano, or fiddle, or whatever. The more repetition you do, the, the better you're going to get. Simple as that. Got to put in the time. Who is the fiddle player you look up to? Fiddle player I look up to? Uh, you mean famous fiddle player or? Whatever fiddle player. Inspiring. Inspiring fiddle player. Inspiring. Well, I tell you, when I was, um, there was a time when I actually quit, quit playing music and I went back to school for a computer animation. Um, but I used, I, I used to play on the streets for, for spare change you know what busking is right yeah i used to bust and um so i would learn a lot of fiddle tunes basically i learned to play on the street is what where i learned and, and it was you know to put me through computer animation school so uh the target at that point i thought was just to get me into a you know a computer program uh degree but little did i know it was actually preparing me for the shy twain gig that was coming up in a couple of years from that point so I had to learn a lot of fiddle tunes and one of the one of the fiddle players that I would always learn his pieces was Mark O'Connor and he had an album called The New Nashville Cats and I would I would learn all the fiddle parts on his albums and that's kind of how I learned to play fiddle to be honest Mike I don't know if I'm saying this right Mike Tarkin says he would love to hear you guys do share Ah uh, Mike you're my man. Mike is a good friend of mine. He's a, he's a huge Star Wars collector. And we became friends. I actually did his podcast called The Sandcrawler. He also asks about the story for the stormtrooper on your desk. Oh, um, so this one, I guess. This is, um, this is the Han Solo doll. Han Solo in, in Stormtrooper. Oh, cool. Here, right? And I honestly don't remember when I got this or where I got it, but I was, I was, yeah, it says Han Solo. Oh, I, I don't have my glasses. I can't read it. But uh, I got this back in the 90s, I guess, or something. And I went through my storage one day. I totally forgot that I even had this and a bunch of other toys. I opened the box and there's all these Star Wars toys and I was so happy. And this was one of them. Do you know how much it's worth? We'll have to ask Mike how much it's worth because he knows about toys and stuff. I don't know. It's not in the box. So it's probably not worth anything. <laughs> but I have, a, I have a problem leaving my Star Wars toys in the box because, you know, you can't play with them. What's the point of a toy if you can't play with it? <laughs> Steel, Sun from, Steel Sun from Italy asks, what was your best gig? And he says, cheers from Italy. There's a lot of people from Italy, actually. My best gig, well, I have to say, and Italy was one of them because uh, we played at a castle in Italy, outside a castle in, within the uh, the walls. And I'd never been in that kind of environment before. I thought it was so cool. That is so cool. I also played in Hyde Park with Shania. That was really cool. That was like for 100,000 people. I also played in Wembley Stadium in london which was really cool with kelly clarkson um where else yeah th those are the ones that really come to mind really cool gigs also the gladiator uh forum in uh, Nîmes, france that was really cool and that, the, the the castle and the gladiator arena were coliseum were both playing with slash uh last july that was really fun so adding close i don't know if i'm saying this I'm sorry if I mess up your name. I'm not good at it. Adam Close to asked, "Would you you come to play to Argentina and play and get to know Argentina?" 
I would love to go to Argentina. Um, I've never really been anywhere in South America other than Brazil, like t for two shows, but I've never toured extensively there. I know Brent and Todd have been there a lot. And Argentina is definitely, uh, I mean, it's beautiful countryside. Could be wrong, but isn't, doesn't, uh, isn't um, Patagonia also in partly Argentina? I'm not sure. But I watch a lot of these van life videos on YouTube. Do you know what van life is? Yeah. 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 It's like people who sort of like sell everything and they, they just travel around in a van and just drive everywhere. And some of them are driving. Yeah, they start at the tip of Argentina and they go all the way to Alaska. And they just drive and experience and, and see the different culture and of uh, the different countries. And Argentina always looks really cool to me. I would love to go there. You never know. Someday. Uh, we want to talk to the Detroit Tiger, Daniel Norris, about wh why. About van life. About van life while baseball is gone. What's the question? No, it, we're, there's, we, we're trying to line up Daniel Norris from the Tigers, and he he does van life during the off season. Oh, that's pretty and, sweet. Uh, I'll have to that, follow him. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you his, his, his info. It's kind of neat. So he's not your typical yeah. Where does he go? Just around the States? Uh, uh, your coast. West coast. Nice. Yeah. Our mom, our mom loves Kelly Clarkson, which is kind of funny. She's awesome. <laughs> She's awesome. Your mom and Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> James asks, how is working with the queen of country music, Shania? Yes. Well, I've done it for like 20, 22 years or something like that. So if I didn't think it was awesome, I probably wouldn't have stayed with it as long as I did. Um, Shania is awesome. I mean, I, I was with her since her very first world tour. I played every gig with her all, uh, that she's ever done on tour. Um, I missed one promo show in Japan and I missed um, a TV show that she did with Alison Krauss's band, but that was obviously because she had Alison Krauss's band. So, but other than that, I played every show with her and um, you know, uh, she's, she's fantastic. She's talented um, and she's smart and funny and Canadian. <laughs> so it's been, it's been a great 22 years for sure. Uh, someone asked, is Todd as down to earth as he seems? Is Todd no, no, no. You should see him behind the camera. He is mean, mean, mean. <laughs> no, he's exactly like that. He's he's the <laughs> nicest guy. He, he treats everybody with respect. And um, I've actually never seen him give any attitude to anybody. Morio Chakram asks about going from B going from being a vegetarian to being vegan. Nice. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I was vegetarian. What is there a question there? Did you ask me a question? I don't know. That was a question. Well, about the transition. How was the transition? Oh, how was the transition? It's, it's a piece of cake. Um, you know, if you're veg uh, a vegetarian will have eggs and, and dairy for anybody that doesn't know. And dairy and eggs, you know, for vegetarians, because I was a vegetarian for, you know, since 19, 1989. Um, and, and you think that, well, no one's dying. I'm just, you know, I'm just eating eggs and they're unfertilized. And, you know, I'm just getting the, the milk from a cow, but the cows all live happy lives. Well, that is not true at all. And, you know, eggs are, um, eggs are, have a really, really dirty little secret that because all the, when they breed, the hens, because only hens will lay eggs, right? So what do they do with all the other boys, the, all the roosters that also get breeded? <laughs> That's right. They actually, on their first day of birth, they go into a, um, a grinder alive and they just get blended up. That's, that's the egg industry. <laughs> yeah. And people don't know that, right? But once you know that, you can't turn away from it. Now I've told everybody that's listening, so now no one can have eggs ever again. <laughs> But the, the, trans 
the transition's easy. Instead of eggs, you just have tofu. There's lots of egg replacers. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to have French toast with eggs. I don't care. You know, well, let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Would you, would you put live baby chickens inside a blender every time that you had French toast and turn the switch on? No. Honestly, no. So why, so why would yeah, you pay someone to do that? <laughs> why would you actually? Calm down. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, what I, that's what I had to ask myself. I, I couldn't justify that anymore. Have promoters gone better <laughs> about meeting dietary needs of vegans? And Say that again? Have promoters gotten better about meeting dietary needs of vegans? And me and Bob owe you vegan ice cream. Nice. Way to go, you guys. <laughs> yeah, because we yeah. promoted that and we, that never happened. That has to happen after. So why do you get the vegan ice cream? Yeah, so Dandy's in Regina does vegan food, vegan ice cream, and it's pretty good. They have flavors like salt and caramel, Oreo. Yeah. By the way, this is not a paid promotion. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, 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 the vegan ice cream is, is perfect right now. If you Ben & Jerry's has, you know, all the flavors, and they taste just like the real thing. So when you, when you don't have to sacrifice anything, it makes it easier to transition and that's you know that's to the question of the of the person that asked that question is that you re you realize in the transition you don't have to give up anything you still have like scrambled eggs but you have the vegan ones the there's a product called just egg you put it in the pan you can make an omelet with it you put in all your mushrooms and spices and whatever else you want uh, you put in the vegan butter and you don't have to give up anything you're still eating the exact same foods but you're eating the plant based versions which instantly are better for you because they're not full of of cholesterol and saturated fat. So the win-win for everybody. Animals love it. Your health loves it. The planet loves it. Tina, asked, Tina Marshall asked, does two plan to play outside of Canada? Absolutely. Um, there, will be, there will be a time for that. And uh, I'm not sure when that will be. But uh, we, you know, we already played in LA at, at the NAMM show for two years. Um, and we'd love to do another tour, but it's a, it's, a, it's all down to our schedules and the financing of the whole thing and just making sure that everybody stays alive if, if we do that. You know, obviously, all, all our cover tune music right now is all Canadian, so that's why we're always in Canada. Most, you know, all our dates are there now. Stone Camille has a vegan Mexican restaurant in the Valley. She just said that, and she just wanted yeah. to Yeah. What's it called? Oh, just put it in the comments. Yeah, just put it. Still put it. Yeah, put it in the comments. She'll have to try it out. Where did she say this is? Mex. Oh, she didn't say in that. the valley. In, in the valley. In, in the LA Valley? valley? San Fernando Valley? Lumberton Valley? Any valley? Well, wait. Um, okay, well, that's really cool. I mean, <laughs> you know what? This is also, to answer that other question, to transition to vegan, there's an app called Happy Cow. Just download it on your phone. It's called Happy Cow, and it will tell you wherever you are in the world where the closest vegan restaurant is to you. Also not, an, not another paid promotion. Also not another paid promotion. <laughs> we do not do paid promotions yet. yet. That's right. That's right. Uh, so we... Oh, it's Lenore's. Lenore's Mexican VG. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, in the San Fernando Valley. That's close to my house. Oh. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been there for so many years. It was like the original vegan Mexican restaurant. All the guys from Def Lambert used to go there. Also not a paid promotion. Also we not a paid promotion. Lenore's vegan Mexican cuisine. No paid There's so many now. So... We're getting close to wrapping this up, so share as many questions as you want, because we are close, getting close to wrapping this up. Did you comb your hair for this? Did I comb it? No, I didn't comb it. I just kind of took a shower and then shook it out. Just do the, I you know, the hair, the hair clip. Yeah, you did the same thing? I just do this. I never comb my hair. He does not like combing his hair. 
It's, my hair doesn't agree with it. Yeah, yeah like, honestly. literally, come show them your hair. It can't be combed. Yeah, I just put a hat on it. It can't be combed. It can't off. be combed. Literally, it's can't be combed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, do, do you have any new hobbies because of isolation? Um, you know what? Uh, it's not a new hobby, but it, but I've been get, getting out on the trails in LA. I love to hike. I love to run. Uh, actually, running is a new thing for me, so I, I'm just getting my lungs up uh, to speed on that. Um, but you know what? They just closed down all the trails in, in LA, so now I can't even do that. How do you like that? But I've been cooking a lot of vegan food and trying new recipes, and that's been a lot of fun. Shane while in isolation with Shane yeah. yes well Shane, Shane uh, he, he does a lot of it too but he lives like 45 minutes away from me so we don't get together as, as often as we should his trails are still <laughs> open though because he lives in a different county he lives in uh, Ventura County and I live in Los Angeles County so I have to uh, wait it out you know self quarantine and maybe I go for a little run and walk the dogs around the house here but that's about it uh, what do you, what do you want to do once this is over? Um, I want to get back on the trail. I want to get, get, uh, get together with Tuke so we can record all the stuff we need to do, you know, when we're together, the bass and the vocal tracks. Shane can do all, all the drum tracks at home on his own. Um, and just get back to normal life and planning for my van life retirement. <laughs> Are you tired of washing your hands yet? Well, I haven't washed them as much being at home. Because I figure any anything that's... Because I'm not going out, right? So anything that's going to get me will have gotten me by now. So I don't really worry when I'm in my house. But if I go out, if we have to get something from the grocery store, absolutely, we, we wash immediately and uh, take every precaution possible. Thank you for... Oh, yes, one last thing. This is not a question, it's literally a fact. Todd owes us a comic book trip. He said, I'm pretty sure he said he would do it with us. Or we said he, we would do it with no, him. No, he said. Next time he's in Regina. Next time he's in Regina and you guys are in Regina, we, oh, you guys. Does anyone I have should... any last questions? We'll do the oh, next question no that pops up. One question. Oh, we got okay. Question. Okay, what's your favorite celebrity to work with? Oh, you're gonna you're gonna ask me to pick a favorite? <laughs> it's like saying who's your favorite child? <laughs> Do you ask your dad that? <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> you have? <laughs> who's the stronger twin? Who's the stronger twin? Me. You mean body odor or like strength? <laughs> oh. Body odor. <laughs> You're supposed to have brotherly love. Come on, you guys. And Get along. That involves fighting. <laughs> no, no. It's the circle of life. It's about Thank peace you. and love. <laughs> oh, Bark just joined us. Hey, Bark. Oh, who's your least favorite? Who's my least favorite? Uh, that I definitely can't answer. <laughs> Rationality. Thanks for having me, you guys. It's great to talk to you again. My first time here, but this guy. <laughs> not not only is it your first time in Moose but your first time in John's music. So yeah, yep, it's all here about the, the whole history of firsts happening right here. That's Corey Churko. He's from Moose Jaw. Make some noise for him tonight. Today, Moose Jaw. <laughs>